If you're going to mediation soon or you have clients who are, consider pre-mediation coaching with us at High Conflict Institute. This is a brand new service we're providing and here's why. Most people are unsure what will happen in mediation and how to prepare for it, especially in a high conflict mediation. Studies show that regardless of the skill level of your mediator, learning a few key conflict resolution skills can increase your success of settling your matter out of court. Our pre-mediation coach will work with you in a 90-minute one-on-one session by Zoom or phone to help you learn to stay calm, to make reasonable proposals, and make decisions that can last. A small investment with significant positive outcomes. Schedule your pre-mediation coaching session on our website at the link below in the show notes or call us at 619-800-2070. If you're a lawyer, mediator, or other professional and want more info, just ask us at highconflictinstitute.com on our contact page or feel free to provide the coaching link directly to your clients today. Welcome to It's All Your Fault on True Story FM, the one and only podcast dedicated to helping you identify and deal with the most challenging human interactions, those with someone who may have a high conflict personality. I'm Megan Hunter, and I'm here with my co-host, Bill Eddy. Hi, everybody. And we're also here with our very, very special guest, Susie Rayner, who is part of our team at High Conflict Institute, and she's just flown in from Australia, and uh, we're really excited to have her here. And you'll hear a lot more from her and a lot more about why she's here and what she does with us at High Conflict Institute. But I want to give you a couple of notes at the beginning. Um, If you have a question about High Conflict situations or someone that's, you know, causing a lot of trouble, just send those questions to podcast at highconflictinstitute.com or on our website at highconflictinstitute.com slash podcast. You can find all the show notes and links at highconflictinstitute.com slash podcast as well. And please give us a rate or review and tell your friends, colleagues, or family about us, especially if they're dealing with a high conflict situation. We'd be very grateful. Now let's get on with the show. I'm just going to hand it straight over to Bill and Susie, and they're going to have a great conversation about new ways for families and what Susie does and where they're going and all kinds of things. So you'll enjoy. So welcome, Susie. I'm so glad to have you here in the United States for a conference this week. We'll give you a whirlwind week here. But since you're our international coordinator for New Ways for Families, you're actually going to be filling people in on what we do, etc. So first of all, greetings. And why don't you tell us a little bit what you do with New Ways for Families and what it is? Thank you, Bill. And it's so uh, amazing to actually be here in the United States. I, For our listeners, I flew over from Australia. I actually live in Melbourne. I flew over on Mother's Day. Uh, it was a long flight, but it was a good flight. Uh, I landed in LA and then on to Phoenix, which is where I am right now. Uh, so it's been exciting. It's been a long trip, but I'm here and I'm really excited to then fly in the morning to Chicago for the actual conference. It's amazing. So amazing and great to have you here. Now, the conference is one, it's the Association of Family and Conciliation Courts, which has usually people from 80 countries, typically 11 or 1,200 people, all of who are focused on parenting issues in divorce and custody situations. And so you and I are going to be a couple of the speakers. Do you want to tell our listeners a little bit what New Ways for Families is and how it helps people in potentially high-conflict divorces? So the New Ways for Families method, I guess, is different from just a normal parenting class in that we focus on skill building. It helps parents, we hope, to stay out of court or if they're actually in the court system, then it really helps them in the process to manage emotions, to um, moderate their behavior, to think a bit more flexibly. So the online program that we have is a 12-module online course, which is taken in their own parents' time, which is self-directed. It's interesting, and it's something that I believe we 
don't see very often. What do you think, Bill? It is really different. And what's exciting is I developed this method about a dozen years ago, and you're the person that's been working with us now for you know, at least two, three years as a coordinator, really helping coordinate getting it established around the world, which it really has become. But yes, it's skills focused. And and you're absolutely right that this is what really helps potentially high conflict parents stay out of court, or if they're in court, helps them kind of calm the conflict. And the judges tell us that their body language seems less adversarial when they come back to court after having been through this, if they come back to court. It also seems to help them implement what the court decides if necessary. So it's really, you know, for out of court and for in court families and cases. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. And I think the aspect or the the way that we deliver the course being online, it gives, uh, you know, working parents the time to sit down of a weekend, take some time out. It's not very long. It's 12 uh, modules, which are about one hour each. So it can be done in a, you know, you could do one every day or one every week. It just depends on um, how much time the parent has. But it definitely is something that, parents can do it in their own time. So there's no driving to a parenting class where they're getting stressed out, where they have to find a car park, where they're getting anxious about who's going to be in the room. It's all done in the safety and the privacy of their own home, which I think adds a lot when you are separating or divorcing, especially because you're, uh, you know, they're stressed out. They're, they're, you know, they're getting a lot from the other parent or if they're in court, there's a lot of other things to do, a lot of affidavits and writing and connecting with the courts and the lawyers and it's a lot for them. So this is something that they can use along with their co-parent and co-parent effectively and communicate better with their co-parent. Yeah, and I also wanted to mention that you mentioned before, uh, when we have the 12 modules, we also offer coaching sessions with the 12 modules online. And that seems to be a really progressive method that's going around the world now. And Bill is absolutely correct. We are launching in all different countries around the world has been super exciting for us in the last couple of months. I know, Bill, this is your baby, so I know this is quite exciting for you. But yeah, the parents will use the coaching sessions if they choose. It's optional to have coaching uh, with the online program. We can cement the skills as a coach. That's what I do as well, as long as along with being the program manager for the High Conflict Institute. So the parents learn the skills, they can cement the skills, they can practice the skills with a coach, with makeup scenarios, but also with their real life scenarios. So they get to practice first with a, with the, one of the skills and we'll talk about the skills in a little while. They can practice exercises with the coach and ask questions if they're feeling not quite confident in, especially with a real life situation, they might have a a drop off or a pickup that they're feeling a little bit anxious about. And we can go through them and they can get it out of the way having practiced it. And then when they do it in real life, they've already done this with their coach. So it takes away that little bit of anxiety for them. So ideally, both parents would take this online 12 module course, But if only one of the parents does, then it's better than neither of them doing it, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. We designed the course for both parents, and we asked the judges to order both parents without any bias towards one or the other. So they could start a case before they understand, you know, if one parent's acting particularly badly or they both are, or maybe not as badly, that there's no presumption about that, that they're just really both learning these skills. And one of the things that's different about this approach is it's really focused on the future. And so the parents don't have to be defensive about the past. We're not here to judge them about the past or talk about the past. And so what happens is we really help both of them think positive, think forward, and practicing skills. It's interesting that research on online courses well before COVID was saying that it really helps to have coaching with an online course so that what we're doing is really practicing 
and implementing. Like you said, what if there's a pickup coming up that's going to be controversial? They, you can practice that with your coach. But also what's interesting is we originally started this as a counseling method, but a lot of families couldn't afford counseling because it's nine sessions uh, for each parent in the way the counseling's set up. But by doing the online course, which is, you know, I think it's under $100, plus coaching, coaching's not as expensive as counseling, and it's coaches wherever they are. Now, I, I, I wanted to mention that you've been doing coaching, and you've done it with one parent, you've done it with both parents. What, what's, it, what's it been like? And maybe if you could give us an example of a successful coaching case. Coach, for me personally, coaching the parents in the new ways for families online has been really quite rewarding. Uh, originally, I started working with parents doing mediation. And mediation is where you have to be quite a, set, a fence sitter. You, obviously, you can't side or be biased with one parent or the other. But what I found with doing the coaching and when you take your mediation hat off and you put your coaching hat on is that you can really implement some really strong change in the behavior of the parents. And by using the skills, which are managing your emotions, flexible thinking, moderating their behavior, and then checking themselves, they are four skills. They are they might seem very basic skills, but they're really powerful, not only when they're put together, but once parents actually learn how easy they are to put into practice and into play in their real life, it makes a huge difference. And, you know, of course, when we're growing up, we, we, we don't get taught these conflict skills. So, you know, it's really difficult for parents to come on in and go, oh, okay, now I have to manage my emotions, but I've never had to do that in the past, or they don't know how to do that. So this online program helps them in a way that uh, is supportive with a coach or, or you don't have to have the coach, that's absolutely fine. But the online program is repetitive enough that we do actually get parents that not only want to change, but they do end up changing their, their thinking and their behavior and they realize how much it has affected them in the parenting styles that they've been using in the past and how much they can actually uh, communicate more effectively by using the program or learning the method. So, from my experience, it's been truly great to see the change um, in parents after they've learnt the skills, and that is a change absolutely for the better. And I've seen it time and time again. Um, they come in, uh, you know, a little bit defensive because they feel they've done nothing wrong, or they're that that's not them that's got the problem; it's the other parent. And then once I work with them and. It's only normally three sessions of about one hour each. You can really see a big change. And they can have more sessions if they choose to, but generally we offer three coaching sessions with the online program, but you can do more. So most of us, as I said, have not been taught resolution or conflict resolution skills, but once they learn these skills, they can apply them to almost all areas of their life, not just with their co-parenting life. So it makes a difference across the a broad area and makes it easier. What would be some of the types of other problems in life that they might bring in besides dealing with their co-parent? Look, they've got areas where they might be working. They might be a single dad working full time, um, having to rush here, do this, do that. They might also have issues with families. So these um, these skills that they learn can be introduced and implemented in other areas, which will help them calm their stress levels. It helps them to focus on being a better parent or being that better work colleague and reducing stress levels in all areas. So it's not only just be with their co-parenting, especially in their workplace as well. And that's not just to say that it's the fathers who are working full-time, the mothers could be working full-time as well, and they can then with each other, co-parent more effectively, reduce the stress levels around themselves and in front of their children, which is super important. How we deal with conflict is that we tend to do what our parents or carers did. And sometimes this is always not the right way. It, it can be, but sometimes there's a little bit like, oh, that perhaps should be done another way. So 
once we give parents these skills and they see the difference it makes, uh, you know, it's like if you hadn't learnt these skills yet, then once you learn them, then you wish you had have learnt them earlier. You know, we hear that all the time. People say, I wish I knew this last week or last month or, or 10 years ago, I remember somebody told me. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's the ability to work together with people without it having to have a lot of conflict, a lot of intense emotions. You can have emotions, but managed emotions is how how it's taught. Absolutely. And you've got, you know, parents who are separating and divorcing have got children of all different ages. And whether they're little babies or toddlers or primary school age children, or uh, for the Americans, I think it's elementary. I'm not sure, but I think there's the, the little yeah. ones. Yeah, the, the <laughs> five to 12 year olds, pretty yes. much elementary school. That's right. And if you've also got your teenagers, um, you know, these skills help with that. And they help in a way that reduces your stress level as a parent or the or the parents' stress levels to role model good parenting skills and to teach their children how to manage their own emotions if they're upset or if they're angry or if they're frustrated. Then we get to it's, it's sort of a double double edge really. It's great because the parents get to learn the skills, but they also then can introduce them to their children, which then in turn makes for a really much less stressful home life. Absolutely. You know, in in all of this, one of the things I wanted to mention is that the way we designed New Ways for Families was to help parents not just co-parent and work with their kids, but to be able to make big decisions like what happens when they get divorced. And so helping them have skills to make a general parenting plan, uh, you know, when you go through separation or divorce, you end up with a parenting schedule and and plan around, you know, bringing the kids, returning the kids, all of that. Have you noticed that you mostly are coaching, when you're doing the coaching, it's mostly people who've already made the big decisions in their divorce, or is it in some cases before they've made those big decisions and hopefully will help them make those big decisions? Yeah, it's it's probably 50-50. I do see a lot of parents that are either perhaps in the court system, they've got, you know, the supervised visits or access happening uh, because of something that they may have done negatively, which, you know, in hindsight, they wish they hadn't have, but they're in this situation. And I find that uh, this really helps them not only for themselves, but when they're in front of the judge as well, they they want to be a better person after all of what's happened to them in the past. And they see the changes and they see how much of a positive impact it makes on themselves and on their children and their co-parent. And it really does. Oh, look, I've seen it time and time again. And it's very, like I said, it's very re- rewarding to see how much that, not only how much they change, but they actually want to. They want their learning. They want more. And they always say, oh, maybe I'll have a couple more sessions. Sure. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. See how, they, see how they go. But one thing I wanted to say is that um, you asked if I had a bit of a story. And I do have one particular story that comes to mind. And I worked with a dad who was a little hot-headed. He was from San Diego and I was coaching. So the beauty about the coaching for anybody else who's out there listening to this is that you can coach thanks to COVID. There has been one good thing about COVID is that you can coach now worldwide. So I live in Melbourne, Australia, and I have coached people in Canada, in America, even in Australia. But the beauty of COVID is that we've done it all via Zoom. And because the method is not necessarily law-based, then we can coach anyone anywhere. So it really works. Let me just mention what what you're saying about law-based is a lawyer can't practice law in a different state unless they're licensed to practice in that state. And a counselor can't practice counseling in a different state unless they're authorized to do that, which Zoom has, with COVID, there have been exceptions made. But coaching isn't as deep as, say, counseling, and it's focused on teaching skills going forward. So it doesn't have the kind of regulation state to state 
that you see for those other two professions. So I just wanted to clarify, coaching is allowed to be done from around the world. And that's the beauty of having you be able to do people in Denver, people in San Diego, people in Toronto and, uh, mm -hmm. and worldwide. So it's very exciting that way. And I guess you have to adjust for the accents a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I am um, asked if I'm from England a lot. Yes. <laughs> which which I think I sound very, very Australian, but to somebody who hasn't really heard the uh, accent, then it may sound English. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so I had been um, coaching this dad from San Diego. He had landed in court because of his behavior or negative behavior, I should say, towards his son and his former partner. He was in at that time, he was having supervised visits with his son at a supervised centre, a contact centre, which, you know, he did. He wasn't happy about, and he, but he understood the reason why he was there and why it had to happen. But he, he said, I'm a good person. I just want people to see that about me. And I said, well, that's okay. We will need to use these skills to then you can go to your court case, which is coming up, and you can show the judge how you've changed, what you've learnt. Uh, you can take your certificates so you can show him exactly what you've learnt, which was great. So we spent three sessions together, and over those three sessions, which were about one hour each, the thing with this dad was that he was really, really willing and he was really wanted to get to see his child again unsupervised. So he had a really something that was driving him and he was wanting to do everything and anything and he was wanting to absorb any new skill that he absolutely could to become a better person. So that was, working with him was really good, I guess. And yeah, so in the end, um, he was wanting to learn the skills. He wanted to change and he actually did. So in the end, we finished the three sessions and he used the skills as best he could in his interactions with the supervised visits, even with the people that were the supervisors. So you asked me before, Bill, where can you use these skills? Well, he used the skills with the supervisors because he didn't like when he was told, you can't say that to your child or you can't do that or you can't bring in that water bottle. You have to pour the water down the drain. And he couldn't understand why he had all these stipulations. And I said to him, you know, you're in a supervised contact center. You have to play by their rules. You'll be then got, you'll get some positive notes being taken. And then the supervised visits will hopefully get less and less over the time, over the next few months. And he said, okay, I understand. I understand. So it took a little bit, but he, he was using the skills. And every time we would talk about them and talk about an upcoming situation that he was going to get nervous about. And we'd go through a practice scenario. And that really made a big difference because he'd already been through the situation with me as a role play. And then when he got to the real life situation in the supervised visits, he was able to think back and go, oh, that's right. Susie and I had this. And we would debrief after we'd come back and he would tell me what happened in the next session. So it was really good. So anyway, after a few months, I finished up the sessions with him. And after a few months, I did wonder how he was going. And then one day I got an email from him, you know, I think it might've been six months later, um, that the judge had seen a big change in him and that he was excited to let me know that he no longer had supervised visits and he'd actually be given overnights again with his son. And he was just ecstatic. And he couldn't thank the coaching and the online program enough because he learned so much about what he had done and how his actions and his thoughts and his emotions had landed him where he actually was. And it was just, it was, it was, and I was so pleased for his progress. And when I got his email, I just, it reiterated to me how much this works. That's such a fantastic example. And I, I really think one of the key things is 
with this approach, it's really focused on learning skills and applying them and practicing them rather than talking about the past and what you shouldn't have done and you should never do that again and never do this again and and how are you feeling and getting over things. What we really try to do is steer away from how are you feeling to what are you doing, what can you do now? And that just totally positive aspect of it sounds like it really, he absorbed that and felt excited about the positive future. Absolutely. He did. And like you said, Bill, the the program or the method is a no shame and no blame approach. And we don't go into the past about why you did this, why you did that, what happened. We're, we're not trying to bring out all of the past and sort all that out, we're focusing on the future and then implementing these skills from straight away. The first session, we implement one of the skills. So it's there instantly for them to even start the minute after they finish the hour session with me. They can go along and if I see them the following week, they come back and they say, oh, I used that skill and it was great. So, yeah, it's it's definitely, I'd, so I've seen a big change. Excellent. Excellent. I'm so glad because you're right there face to face or at least Zoom to Zoom, mm, mm. <laughs> being able to really get into this. And I'm so excited that the balance of an online class where you learn about skills and just three coaching sessions could make that much difference. And that's, that's you know, research tells us it's this combination. You really can use online learning as long as you have a, a human being to practice it with. Mm. And that's right. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, I agree. Now, I wanted to go into one last area, and that is you developed the New Ways for Life method. Tell us a little bit about that. What inspired you to do that and and who it's for and how it works? This is quite an interesting story. I guess a little a short backstory is I had been uh, a personal going through a personal situation with a family member who was going through a pretty horrific um divorce and separation in the in the Australian courts here in oh, not here <laughs> back home <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and uh it sort of it sparked something in me to completely change my career and go into family dispute resolution and thought there's got to be another way to help these parents without being in the court system mediation. So I went back to uni and studied, finished that. But within that program, within that course, I did the New Ways for Families coaching method with you. It was about three and a half years ago now. and it sparked something in me that I thought, if we're teaching parents these skills, we've got to catch them in the net earlier. We, we've got to catch them before they're in the court system, going through horrific divorces and get them earlier so that hopefully they don't end up in this terrible situation. So I thought, why are we not teaching teenagers these skills and adapting the new ways for families to teenagers or, or, you know, for say 12 to 17 year olds. So after I did my initial training with you, I emailed, I think it might've been yourself, mm. maybe. And I said, what do you, what do you think? And it just went from there. And so it's been, it's been an amazing journey. Um, so the the new ways for we've called it new ways for life, which is for the twelve to seventeen year olds, which we've basically adapted the new ways for families method, but taken out all the divorce bits and pieces, and then we've changed the language to suit the twelve to seventeen year olds. So, our example is you know my my younger sister took my white jumper and didn't ask me if she could wear it, um, you know, <laughs> and that you go crazy at your little sister and how to manage your emotions in that sort of situation or in your school life with your friends or with your parents if you're a teenager. And I know right off the bat that I've got two teenagers, 17, uh, nearly 17 and 18 years old. And, and when we first did the New Ways for Life, they were a lot younger. So I can tell you now that I use it every single day mm. with my kids and it, it it's brought us all onto the same page of language so when I say to them, 
you know, are you using moderate behavior? They look at me, they roll their eyes and they go, yes, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The hands yeah. on approach. Hey, if it works with your yeah. own kids. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's, mm. that's wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah, so you and I then we went and we wrote and we wrote and I know you love writing. <laughs> so we wrote and then we've got a New Ways for Life instructor manual for the, for the coach or the instructor to teach the teenager. And we've also got a New Ways for Life teenage journal where the teenager will write their responses to some of the questions that we've got in their journal, which they get to keep the journal if they would like to read over it, they can, if not, but at least we've got the chance to teach the teenagers a few skills. Some of the people that have picked up on that have been people that work with children. So you could have sports coaches might might help with that, school teacher. We've had trainings. We had a training um, for new ways for families and explain the new ways for life. And I remember someone who said, well, I also work with teenagers in our agency, teenagers from difficult situations, and we're going to try that there. We're going to teach that there. So we've really found it's it's applicable. And what's what's so sad in a way is right now we're hearing so much about teenagers and mental health problems because of COVID, the isolation, et cetera, just triggered so much depression, in some cases, uh, suicide attempts, and some successes, sad to say. But I think teenagers are facing more challenges today than, than the prior generations of, you know, just just being so isolated and not having community extended family support when you think about it, it's just been recent generations that have only had one child. People used to have many kids around, used to have extended families. You know, you think of farming culture and you you all have stuff to do and contribute. And now, you know, with things like the pandemic, people being alone in their room with a computer just isn't the same as being around people who who like you. A lot of people who like you, your parents might, but you, don't, you need to be around kids and stuff too. So this this teaches the same four big skills. And I thought we should probably wrap up by just repeating what are the four big skills that we teach. And then uh, we'll sign off and head out to the uh, conference in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Absolutely. I'll let you start. I think of the four big skills, and maybe we could touch on the specifics, but first, as you mentioned, is the managed emotions, that that really helps people actually feel better by knowing they can manage their emotions. Mm, absolutely. And when we talk about managing emotions, it's, a, it's that intense upset emotion that just takes over and that just creates a whole lot of other problems if they act on those feelings. So by managing those emotions, and we've got skills that we teach to manage those for the parent. And then obviously in front of the children, it's ideal if they can manage their emotions and teach their child. Yeah. And then um, the flexible thinking that you know people get stuck it has to be my way or the highway you're doing it wrong it has to be my way what do we teach to help with that well we do we do teach so it's either parents get generally stuck as bill said so it's all or nothing thinking it's black and white thinking but what we teach is you know making some proposals to parents so okay what could we do instead if you don't like that then what else do you have what else do you suggest and it does shift them from that blame game of, well, no, it's all her fault or no, it's all his fault. So it it's a bit of a roadblock when there's a, no, it's all their fault. Yeah. And then this may be one of our most exciting and favorite skills is to help moderate behavior. We teach people how to write emails. Yes. And if your listeners may have not have heard, but we teach the, the BIF response, which is B-I-F-F, -F, BIF response, and it is amazing. It works. You can even just Google BIF response and Bill Eddy will come up and you can have a read. <laughs> um, but if you haven't heard of the BIF response, then I suggest you hop onto our website, have a look. It's amazing. So the, the third skill is teaching parents how to respond to hostile texts or emails or social media 
it's all over, you know, parents are all always on social media. So we've, we've helped them with this BIF response to calm the back and forth text war that I'm sure your listeners being judges or lawyers have seen the texting that goes on and how lengthy they are. Yeah. And then to sum them all up, we have checking yourself. The checking yourself for parents is where they get to stop and think before they act on their unreasonable thoughts or their unmanaged emotions or their, you know, the moderate, the the extreme behavior that they might, you know, slam a car door or throw something at a window. They're checking themselves just gets them to stop, take stock of how they're feeling, what they're thinking and what behavior they're doing. And then they can usually calm down before they write that horrible text message. They can take some time out, go for a walk around the block, just before they end up making or or creating more things that they have to fix in the long run, rather than dealing with uh, in a calm way, I guess. Yeah. So, well, that that really sums it up. So I want to thank you so much for being on our podcast with me and Megan. It's amazing. Thank you. Great. It's been great. It's been great. And now we'll look forward to heading out to Chicago for that conference this week. And hopefully we'll meet some of the people that uh, we've worked with from around the world. And I just want to mention, we've got people we've worked with, like you said, in Canada, the United States, Australia, Scotland. We've trained some people in China. Well, we've, been to, we've got South Africa. South um, Africa. Italy. Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's been, it's certainly gaining momentum worldwide. It's been absolutely amazing to see the growth. It's only since my short years with High Conflict Institute, the growth that we've had has been phenomenal. So if you're listening and you're interested, we would love to chat with you. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. I really appreciate your time. And I will see you at the conference. Thanks, Bill and Susie. It's just been absolutely lovely having you here in the U.S., Susie. And I'm sure you listeners loved hearing her accent and also her information about New Ways for Families. You'll find a link to the New Ways for Families training for professionals and the New Ways for Families online course for parents in the show notes, along with some articles and some books that are pretty good. Um, so next week, we are going back to our Q&A lab where we will answer your questions. So you don't want to miss it. Send those questions to podcast at highconflictinstitute.com or submit them to highconflictinstitute.com slash podcast. If you like our podcast, please leave us a review and a rating. It would be much appreciated. And until next week, enjoy each and every day and keep using your skills so you can can keep enjoying the peace. It's All Your Fault is a production of True Story FM. Engineering by Andy Nelson. Music by Wolf Samuels, John Coggins, and Ziv Moran. Find the show, show notes, and transcripts at truestory.fm or highconflictinstitute.com slash podcast. If your podcast app allows ratings and reviews, please consider doing that for our show. (laughs) 